speaking to me now, leading British and Welsh boxing trainer Guy Lockett. Um, Gary, uh, lockdown hit us last March and affected everyone, including boxers. Uh, how has it affected you and your, your gym and your stable of fighters? Yeah, probably probably affected me exactly the same as it has everybody else. Um, I've had three guys fight, uh, but obviously boxing's it's on its backside at the moment, isn't it? So um, it's really hard to function. Uh, I've got the boys coming in Monday, Wednesday, Friday at the moment, rather than dragging them in every day. So uh, it's hard. It's hard to know when we're going to get back to uh, normal, if 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 ever. Someone saying the other day on Five Live. So. Um, a couple of your boys have been out, uh, Nathan Thorley, um, Nathan was on one of the first shows, if not the first, I think. Uh, how was the, the Covid bubble experience for you, going into it? Horrific. <laughs> Absolutely horrific. You know, it's it like, um, like being in prison, to be honest, but um, no, was some, some good characters there. The first one was a lot stricter than the second one I was in, the first one was a matchroom fight bubble, whereas you couldn't really go out of um, a couple of the corridors of the the hotel um, but then there was also there was just like an outside area a ring in the one part and a, and a cardio gym in the other and apart from that you couldn't go anywhere so it was like being in a, in, a, in a prison for about six days but um, no it wasn't too bad but then the second one was with Meredith Thomas the MTK one which was a little bit more uh, it wasn't so strict anyway so yeah from a, a trainer's point of view, um, obviously it's quite hot in there in the ring, the, the lights, you're you wearing the, the, this mask. I mean, how difficult was it from, from that point of view? Again, horrific. <laughs> obviously, you know, you have to have, you know, the, the, the blue ones that, that we wear, I think they're like a pale blue. They're the throwaway ones, you can buy loads of them. You're not allowed to wear those ones. You have to wear the ones, the specific ones that the boxing board control give you. And it's got like a flap. You pull it up over your nose and down over your chin. Of course, you're trying to shout and the thing's lifting up. And then you've got the visor. The visor is steaming up. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's an absolute nightmare. But, you know, if you want, if you want your guys in the ring, then you obviously have to, uh, you have to abide by the rules, don't you? And, and, and stop moaning like I'm doing now. <laughs> um, how has the COVID, the whole COVID uh, effect altered British boxing, do you think? Obviously, everybody's on the back foot, aren't they? You know, we don't know. We really don't know when the next time we we're going to be uh, back to normal. Like I said earlier, I think I listened to an interview on uh, Radio Five Live the other day, and I think Nicky Campbell was speaking to some medical expert, and he said, "When do you, you know, are we ever going to?" And I thought he was being over the top. You know, he said, "You know, my, myself and my wife, we we often meet with other couples. Are we ever going to be able to go up and hug and, and, and kiss people again?" And and the medical expert said, "Probably not." <laughs> I'm thinking, am I am I listening to a joke station? Yeah, because I I don't know. I really don't know what what they mean by that. Are we ever going to be able to have eighty thousand in in Wembley again, or? Or ever hold a bill in the Millennium Stadium again and have full capacity. It's, it's hard to imagine at the moment that, that we will, but uh, who knows what's around the corner. Uh, the fight itself for Nathan Thorley obviously didn't go uh, Nathan's way. I mean, what's your reflections on the fight? I mean, it was a lot of people thought it was a, a step up for Nathan going in. Yeah, I, I really don't know what to make of it. You know, obviously Nathan's very disappointed in his performance. He said that it's something that he has to put right. Um, only he knows what, what happened in there. I mean, we had a brilliant... Uh, brilliant camp despite obviously being locked down for most of it um, obviously Nathan, Nathan was going up to London sparring sparring all different people and saw him sparring here a few times and, and, and he did everything right um, he was fit as a fiddle did everything right but obviously it just looked like he froze in there to be honest and uh, you know Nathan is a lot better than that uh, Another one of your fighters I know you think a lot of Meredith Thomas he was in a, a step up as well for a WBC youth title I think it was um it was, a, it was a close fight. Did, yeah. Sort of got away with, from Meredith in the end. Yeah, it got away with him in the end. But I think you know he, he gave a good good effort. Uh, what not for the one to try and kid had a kid had a good long jab. He was he was a very accomplished amateur. Um, Meredith hurt him in the fifth. I think the kid was allowed to hold him for about thirty seconds. Um, I think referee could have you know he could have um, warned him a little bit more than what he did. Uh, and the kid from the fifth round on just kept holding and. 
he's a good boxer, but as I say, you know, I think that he was allowed to hold a little bit too much. But um, he just, I, I thought he was good for his victory in the end by probably two points. But uh, you know, Meredith can learn from that. And unless you take fights like this, then how do you know, you know, where they're going to go? We know where he is now and what he's going to improve on. And uh, Swansea J Harris, uh, <laughs> he had to take one, one big punch, but um, he got the victory. Yeah, my heart's still in my mouth. I mean, you know, Jay's a lot better than that fight, I think. You know, I tried to figure out what, what happened that night because he was so leaky in defence, wasn't he? And, he's, you know, he is quite, he does stand quite tall anyway. Um, but if you see, he stood tall against Martinez, but he didn't really take a lot of shots clean. So I think the conclusion that I've come to is that um, I think fighting in Texas against the number one in the world where he had fear of the opponent, pushed him really, really close. But then come, to come back to a domestic level with no crowd, you know, mid-COVID against a guy who, don't get me wrong, you know, he's, a, he's an accomplished fighter, Marcel Braithwaite, but I just don't think Jay had any fear. Um, I think perhaps sub, subconsciously, perhaps he underestimated him just that little bit. But, um, you know, the, the good thing is he came through it with, you know, a comfortable victory in the end. And uh, I think we, we know that he can take a shot now. You know, I, you know, I, sh I show everybody the clip of the shot and, and what I say is, is, is very rarely you see someone hit with a shot like that and they don't go down or they don't go flat out. Remarkable the shot that he got hit with and he, and he didn't go down. It, uh, I'd prefer not to have found out, mind, if I'm honest, but uh, no, he did, he did really well. And I suppose t taking a positive from it, that just gives Jay even more self-confidence if, if he needed any after the Martinez fight. Listen, you know, he's, he's from Townhill, for, God, <laughs> for goodness sake. You know, he, I think they, they breed them all tough down there, don't they? So um, I think we always knew that he could take a shot. But uh, yeah, now, now we know. Um, last week's boxing, Joe Joyce and Daniel Dubois. Um, very good fight, but there was a bit of controversy, if that's the right word, regarding the end. I mean, what's your take on... Um, whether the corner should have pulled him out, whether he, whether he quit, which is what a lot of people are saying. And um, as a trainer and an ex-fighter yourself, I mean, how, how do you view the the whole situation? I think it's um, you know the quit thing that always puzzles me, because how do we know what a fighter is going through when they quit? It just seems to be held over a fighter when they quit. It seems to be held over them like um, like a black mark on their name. And look, I've. I've been, I've had an eye like that. I've had two eyes like it in the one fight. Getting hit in an eye like that, it's like being stabbed in the eye every time. And it's, it's a massive gut check. Um, I've heard rumours of a, of a busted um, you know, uh, eye socket or, or what have you, but people tend to do that nowadays with any swelling, don't they? Um, I don't really know what he's done to his eye. I don't really know the pain that he was in, but only he knows. And I, th I think it's unfair to people to call him a quitter and to call him a shit house and stuff like that. What they do, they haven't got the right to do it because only the boy knows. He was obviously in a lot of pain to do what he did. And let's, let's be fair, the fight was right in the balance at the time. So he had no need to sort of go down and quit, did he? So it's, it's a little bit uncalled for, some of the things people say. But listen, only the boy knows the reasons he did it. I only suspect that he was in a massive amount of pain. Okay, uh, thanks, Gary. Um, I could ask you a million more questions, but I know you're busy doing your personal training, so I'll uh, catch up with you next time.